Hey, good morning, family. Welcome to New Hope Hawaii Kai. Um, we're just so glad that you're here with us this morning. And, um, you know, I, I don't know what you've been going through this week, but um, I know that there's lots of people out there right now that just need a touch from Jesus. So I don't know if that's you, but um, why don't we just go ahead and take some time right now to prepare our hearts. Will you just pray with me? Heavenly Father, we just thank you, Lord. Um, we thank you that, that you have so much love for us. We thank you that when two or more are, are gathered in your presence, or that are gathered in your name, then you are present. So Lord Jesus, we just acknowledge you right now. And we say, come Jesus, come. Have your way with this time as we glorify you. Would you touch hearts? Would you move right now like the only way you can move, Jesus? Have your way. Amen. Let's worship, fam.
kind of led by this scripture here in John 15 right now and um, <laughs> I just kept on hearing this as we were worshiping and it talks about remaining in the Father's love it's John 15 is as the Father has loved me so have I loved you now remain in my love if you obey my commands you will remain in my love just as I have obeyed my Father's commands and remain in his love I have told you this so that my joy may be in you and that your joy may be made complete. Can I just lead you in a prayer right now, family? Just, just asking the Lord's love and His joy to come and pour out on us. Just like this song that we were singing, I don't know. Let's pray, family. Lord God, um, you're doing something right now we want to remain in your love we want to experience your joy 
Lord God. We want to obey your commands, Lord. So Lord, would you just come in right now? Would you wash over us with your love, Lord? Oh, yeah, there you are, Lord. You're undeniably here right now. Yes, Lord, more. Pour out more of your love. Help us to receive that joy, Lord. Form new hearts in us right now, Lord. Veins, flesh, that will receive this love, Lord. We want to remain in you, Lord, in you and us. Oh, there you are. We acknowledge your love washing over us right now, Lord. So good, Lord. Family, enter in. Ask the Lord to wash you with his love right now. There he is. This is just so good. Your joy is so good, Lord. The way that you love us is so good, Lord. Jesus, when we have you, we win. When we have you, Jesus, we have everything. We're not seeking after the things of this world right now, Lord. You're so good, Lord. Jesus, we just want to thank you right now. Thank you for dining with us right now, right here. Thank you for making this table before us. We enjoy you, Lord, right now. We worship you. We pray, Lord, that this encounter would not end, but that you would move tonight, Lord, that you would speak, and that you would be glorified. In Jesus' name, amen. Welcome to church, fam. Kai, we're so happy you could be here today. Yes. My name is Daniel. I'm Lehua. And we got your announcements for today. Absolutely. Uh, but before stoked. we get into announcements, yes. we just want to say welcome. Yes. And if it's your first time here or your 10th time here and you want to get connected, then we have a way for you to do so. Mm -hmm. And that's by texting the word welcome yes. to 808 670 3377. 
Text that in, you'll get a response back, and we'll make sure you get connected in every way that we can. Yes, absolutely. We have some announcements for today. Yes, and so we have the last week of our 21 days of prayer and fasting. How's, how's your week been? It's been amazing. It's yes. been awesome. It's been spirit, yes. it's been spirit led. Yes. Uh, there's been some, there's yes. some disputes. There's some, been some yep, some on, things but, that are difficult, but that's yeah. okay. We got one more week. And what we have is morning times of prayer. So that's going to be Tuesdays, Wednesdays, and Thursdays, 6 a.m. in person and on online on Zoom. So join us for that. This is the last week that we can do that. It's not about how you fit, how you start sometimes, but it's about how you finish. Amen. Amen. So let's let's finish this together. Yeah, right? Super right? good. Woo! All right. Um, last thing that we have for you guys is also our in-person service. Yes. And that's happening August 20th at King's Chapel. And, and what time is that? Again? That's going to be at 7 o'clock p.m. So that's going to be our in-person service coming this Friday, August 20th. And we're going to be praying. We're going to be worshiping. So don't don't come up to the ministry center. Don't show yep. up here. Yep. But be down there with us. Register online right now. Yes. Uh, register your neighbors, register your friends, yep. register your, Everyone. your, your, your Grandma, kids, teachers, auntie, I don't know, uncle, register them. All of them, yes. Just do it, just do it. <laughs> awesome, and we have our last announcement, which is? Last announcement, it's youth ministry. <laughs> so parents <laughs> in the room, students, if, if they're in middle school, if they're in high school, we have youth yes. ministry happening right now. It's Wednesdays from 5 o'clock to yes. 6 o'clock in our backyard. It's at our house. We're making no sure excuses. we're doing the social distancing thing. Yep. You know, we have masks on, all that kind we're of stuff. We're outdoors. Outdoors. Yep. We're having fun, but most importantly, we're getting to know Jesus and yeah. in doing so, getting to know more about ourselves. So yeah. you're not going to want to miss it. We have registrations online as well through yep. our newsletter. Absolutely. Uh, and for any more information, see either myself or Lehua, yes. and we'll get you guys connected. Uh, but that's all the announcements we have that for today. That is. So, and next up. Next up, can we welcome up our very own Pastor Pat McFall and... His beautiful wife, Tara McFall. Welcome, welcome, church. Yeah. Come on. Welcome. We are in it. 21 days of prayer and fasting. So good. We are in the home stretch. Yes. And uh, man, it has been amazing. I know a lot of people engaging. And, and the reason being is because uh, if we're not careful, uh, our prayer life can sound something like this, like, dear God, I'm doing all right. Like I haven't, I haven't gossiped. I haven't lost my temper. I haven't, yeah. I haven't been grumpy or greedy or nasty. Yeah. God, I'm doing yeah. amazing so good. and I'm so stoked. But in a few minutes, I'm actually going to wake up and I'm going to get ready for the day. And that's when I really need your help. <laughs> like I'm, I'm going to have to get out of this bed yeah. and actually uh, live out what I believe. And that's where I need help. See, yeah. we want our prayer life to saturate every part of our life. We want it to be part of our every day. We want it to be like breathing. Paul said it, pray at all times. Like he's always in constant conversation with God. And that's why our verse for this whole series, this book of prayer series has been pray in the spirit in every situation. Use every kind of prayer request there is. Every situation, every kind of prayer request yeah. because we need it. And if God has answered your prayer, here's what I want to encourage you to do. On our website, we have, uh, we have some prayer cards, 21 days of prayer. Boom, it's right there. Click on it, daily prayer focus, all yeah. that. Scroll down just a little bit, just a little. If you're on your mobile, just flick, just flick it. Rip, it makes rip. that sound yep, when you it do does. That. In my yeah. mind, it does. Yeah. And so you just do that. And what comes down is it says share your story. And if there have been testimonies, if there's been uh, mm -hmm. just things that God is doing during this time, Family, we want to hear about yes. it because we want to celebrate. 
Also, I, I want to invite you. Pray with me. I'm here yep. Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, 6 a.m. Let's do this. I got my tea. We're here. We're praying. Because <laughs> you're fasting Get on coffee. Zoom. <laughs> that, uh, you can switch Listen. coffee for yeah, tea sure. in a fast. Yeah. It's fine. Don't worry about that. Um, <laughs> and, and come join because it's an awesome time and we get to pray together. And yes... Come on, prayer and worship. Amazing. Look, I want to mm -hmm. also just encourage us and, and just give, just kind of settle if anybody's a little anxious yeah. about our in-person service. Yep. Look, we put a lot of care. We consult medical professionals mm -hmm. that are dealing with uh, the current situation that we're in from all the variants and all of that. Mm -hmm. And we're really encouraged by their advice. And we are meeting. We're not hindered by uh, any restrictions. In fact, our governor made some clarifications about that. And even if he had laid down the ones he previously said, we would fund, we would find ourselves well yeah. within uh, any of those things. Look, family, we are still meeting. And so if you want to join us, we'd love for you to join us. Yes. We are still masking during that service. Mm -hmm. uh, we are still uh, social distancing yeah. and, and all families that are sitting together in pods of seating that are about six feet apart. Family, we are doing everything that we can to make sure yeah. that when we do meet in person, we're doing it safely mm -hmm. and we're doing it responsibly. And so uh, I want to encourage you, yeah. come if you feel comfortable. If not, hey, that's why we are live streaming so you can be yes. a part of it no matter what. We are celebrating with a night of prayer and worship. It's going to be amazing. Woo! That's it's one of my awesome. like, most favorite nights yeah. after doing 21 days of prayer mm -hmm. and fasting. We all come together and we, we celebrate what God That's has right. done. And then it is just, it's, it's so not just fun, but yeah. it's like, it's, it's just the best. And then we're yeah. all just going to go grab some grub afterwards <laughs> all together. And everyone's going to get right next to <laughs> all the food that everything. they've been fasting. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. All at once. That's going to be really great for <laughs> the stomach. That's gonna be real good. Look, yeah. uh, <laughs> but why are we doing all this? Well, it's because we want to pray first culture at our church. Yeah. Um, it's not that we only pray during this time, but when we have seasons of emphasis, uh, even the Lord from Old yeah. Testament to New Testament, there were these seasons, there were festivals, there were seasons of time where God would have his people gather around a, an idea or they would gather around a story or a testimony mm -hmm. about what God had done. And for us, we want to remember that ours, uh, uh, that our, uh, like our worship to God yeah is our prayer life. It, it, it's our, it's our, it's us giving every part of ourselves to him. Yeah. And, and so that's why whatever we do, we want to pray first. Um, we, before you send the text, pray first, pray first. before we make the phone call, pray, pray first. first before we have, a our, our, our home budget meeting <laughs> or have the, the sure. critical conversation. <laughs> yes. We got to pray. We got to pray, yeah. pray, baby. Before you post on social hey. media. Yes. Oh yeah. But yeah, anytime, even if you're going to look at social media, yeah, pray just first. pray first, yeah. Yeah. please. So uh, we really <laughs> want to do that. Why? Because prayer wants to be our, we want prayer to be our first response, yeah. not our last resort. We kind of talked about that in the last week. Mm -hmm. And as we pray in every situation, using every kinds of prayers, here is what we've done in the last couple of weeks. Here's what we've done. We've used Psalm 23 as a yes. model for prayer. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, God is with us. And we use the names of God uh, in that we can find in yeah. Psalm 23. Jehovah Jireh, Jehovah Shema, Jehovah mm -hmm. uh, Sikadnu, like all of these amazing yeah. names of God as a model for us to engage in conversation and an intimate prayer. We even took the footsteps of Moses. Yes. We so walked in the man's sandals through the tabernacle, from the outer court to the brazen altar, yeah. using the model of tabernacle prayer. And right now, what we're going to look at, we're actually going to look at Jesus's prayer life. Why? Because he's Jesus. Yep. And he's got a, an amazing prayer life. Yep. And if Jesus prayed, we want to pray. So let's take a look at this right now. In Matthew 26, we find Jesus in uh, in, in the Garden of Gethsemane, it's mm -hmm. right before all of the events of the crucifixion are about to kick off. He just had dinner with his closest yep. friends, mm -hmm. and now he's in this place of prayer because he's in it, family. Yeah, it's about to go down. It's about to go and down. He can sense it and feel it, yeah. and so his prayer life is, well, I mean, I want to be like Jesus, yeah. and I want to pray like Jesus, and I think a lot of times when I think about how Jesus prayed, sometimes I'm like, oh, it was probably like so formal or it was like mm -hmm. this perfect sounding prayer. But we get to see this 
incredible moment yeah. where Jesus is being as real as you yeah. possibly can in prayer. Yeah. So, yeah. Like, I think what, what sometimes because we have access to the Word of God so easily by comparison to, to many places in the world, because maybe we're familiar, maybe we've read these passages before, but family, let's, let's realize we are actually yeah. reading the words of Jesus. He yeah. said these words. They're not made up. Mm -hmm. uh, there, is, there, there's such a, there is such an ability for us to trust the word of God in the words that he has said. And this is what we get, Matthew yeah. 26. Then Jesus went with them to the olive grove called Gethsemane, and he said, sit here a while while I go over to pray. He took Peter and James and John, and he became anguished and distressed. Mm -hmm. So this isn't like, the happy-go-lucky prayer meeting with a cup of coffee and a donut, like this yeah. is the real deal. He's in it. And he told them, my soul, Jesus gets deep real quick. My soul is crushed with grief to the point of death. Jesus is tapping into some pretty serious emotion. Yeah. He says, stay here and keep watch with me. He goes on a little farther and he bows his face to the ground, praying, my father, if it's possible, let this cup of suffering be taken away from me. Yet all I want is for your will to be done and not mine. From those words, here is what we see. We see Jesus not just praying by himself, right. but inviting his friends to pray with him. So here's what I want us to remember when it comes to prayer and just looking at the example of Jesus, that prayer is an invitation into your process. Yeah. It's an invitation for others and for, for God to, to come right into your process and be with you in that moment. Mm -hmm. Luke's uh, description of this event says that as it was his custom, see, Jesus had a, a habit of prayer. He had a rhythm of prayer. He spent many nights, long nights, into yes. the night in prayer, mm -hmm. just he and the Father, because he wanted, he, he valued that intimacy. But in this moment, even though he knew his disciples wouldn't get it at all, right. he invites them in anyway. Jesus invites these three guys in yeah. mm -hmm. to hear what he is saying. He invites these three guys that were like so excited. This guy's the Messiah. Right. And he's going to show them what he looks like when he's struggling, facing yeah. the ground. Jesus has angels encouraging him in this moment in Luke chapter 22. And still he yeah. goes back to a couple of slackers <laughs> that keep falling asleep <laughs> on him. That must have been so, that like. That'd be frustrating. I know? would be frustrated. I, and I think because if yeah. you consider the context, he knows what's about to happen. I don't, yeah. I can't imagine. He, he probably needed some and, and wanted them to needed, be with yeah. him. Yeah. And I can't even imagine the degree of loneliness that he must have felt. Yeah. So I think that there are actually some battles that we can't face by ourselves. We yeah. can't win them by ourselves. And that's yeah. why I think that prayer is an invitation into process. I mean, he actually allows the disciples, Jesus in, in his divinity, he could have wrote on his reputation. He could have said, yeah. look at me. I'm never going to yeah. show my weakness. He's on his face. Yeah. He's, and he's literally saying these words. Look, guys, I feel like I just want to die. Yeah. When I think about that moment, and I know we're kind of early on in the message here, but I think about the many times that I've approached prayer in a desperate place, not in a place of strength. Yeah. And in particular, um, you know, I know that sometimes we want, we want to invite people into our process when, when we're, we're in a winning process, things are great. Yeah. It can be incredibly difficult to invite people into our process, especially when it, when it absolutely reveals our weakness our frustration, mm -hmm. our limitation. Our vulnerability. And one yeah. of the, the moments that I feel like we experienced that was, was really, it was in year one of our marriage. Yeah. And it was my, my, my personal secret struggle with pornography up until that point in my life. Uh, I mean, 
I've shared this multiple times at our church in different contexts where, I mean, being exposed to pornography at like six or seven years old and just kind of rolling with it and, and kind of having just this, this experience of, of it being hidden, even coming to Jesus yeah. and still having this thing. And now you think, okay, now I'm married. I have this incredible wife and, and it's, it's, it's going to be fine now. Like I'm, that, that's probably just going to go away. And yet here's this yeah. bondage, this secret sin that's hidden. And I remember in year one, you had gone away for a weekend and pretty much I just binged on porn like crazy. And I was just so embarrassed and ashamed and I remember the conversation when you came back and basically it was that moment where I invited you into my process yeah. and there was a lot of prayer involved with that. There was, but I remember being so scared because I was scared if you were going to reject me, I didn't yeah. want you to feel bad. But I also knew that when I invited you into this process, that, that I was actually going to be hurting you. Yeah. I, I not only was I going to be exposed and I, not only was I going to feel like a perv and like gross and all of these things, but I also knew that by doing that, I was actually probably going to hurt you because of my weakness. Yeah. And I was so scared. I don't know. Do you remember that? Yeah, it was, a, it was heavy. Mm -hmm. It was, I mean, that, it doesn't, doesn't get that much raw or realer mm -hmm. than that. You know, it's, I was not expecting that. I wasn't, you know, um, I was caught off guard. I felt... Yeah, I felt hurt. I felt confused and and really sad. Like just really, really sad. Mm -hmm. And so much to the point, like I was, you know, I'm so in love with this man. And then what's going on within him that he felt like he had to escape to this other place. And of course, you know, it wasn't about me. Mm -hmm. That struggle is not about me. But it was hard not to feel like I wasn't enough mm -hmm. for you. But that's not what that was about. Mm -hmm. And when you invited me into that process, I was like, okay, so we're in this fight then together. Yeah. And this isn't just like a, you know, hey, babe, had a bad day. Can you pray with me? And then, okay, we move on with our day. It was like, there was going to be a long haul yeah. process in this. And the way that you shared with me, and then you continue to seek out wisdom and counsel from amazing men of God who were there for you as well. It was, um, that was very brave. And, and it was tough, you know, yeah. but we pressed in, yeah. in prayer and in communication and all the things. I mean, that was, that was not easy. Yeah. And that yeah. was like year one. Yeah. So gay. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Fun year. <laughs> <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> hey, here's all this, this junk that's been with yeah. me for a long time. And, uh, here you, you married that. I don't know if you knew it, but Did here it that. is. Right. Yeah. And, um, and I remember many times praying with you because this was one of those battles in the same way that Jesus was inviting these men to at least be in the vicinity mm -hmm. to hear him praying. I knew that, that while I had talked to many of my closest brothers, my, my mentors about mm -hmm. this struggle, I had not invited w you yeah. <laughs> and you were, you needed to be a part of that. Yeah. And I actually felt, I, um, I actually felt really bad um, because I just felt like, um, you know, I wasn't like Jesus. Jesus is God. And I mean, we know the end of the story. He's going to raise from the dead. No, right. Pat's not that. Pat is just is feeling really gross. And, and I know that in order to heal, I have to talk to you about it. And um, that sucked. <laughs> yeah. Um, but I know that if we didn't do it because of the way you didn't embarrass me, you didn't shame me, and you didn't penalize me, you didn't do that. Um, and that took a lot. And it took a lot of you talking to other people too. That process yeah. brought the healing that it needed. And so fam, I, I don't know. Maybe you have, maybe it's not that particular struggle, but maybe there are some things that mm -hmm. in prayer, number one, we want to run to Jesus and invite him. Jesus, like you already know yeah. all the things, so would you help me? And then we, maybe yeah. we got to ask, who else are we praying with to invite into a process? Yeah, that was a fall on your face yeah. on the ground moment. Yeah. That was a, this is everything that's in me and I'm laying it all out yeah. and I need you to help me yeah. and, and be in prayer with me. Yeah. And that was hard. Yeah. Um, 
Because you had to be able to acknowledge how you felt. Yeah. Oh, like yeah. you had to yeah. recognize too that this not only was terrible for for me, but it, this is not fair. Yeah. There's nothing about this fair. No. I, what 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 the heck? Kind yeah. of a, you know like. Yeah. So you had to acknowledge all mm -hmm. of the emotion, the very real betrayal, yeah. and all of those things, the yeah. hurt. And I think that's why I appreciate when I look at the the prayer life of Jesus, mm -hmm. is that Jesus does the same thing. That Jesus was never afraid to acknowledge the the human part of yeah. what he was dealing with. He could have very well like stepped yeah. into the fullness of his divinity, but he allowed himself to experience humanity to where in Mark 14, 34, he says, my soul is crushed yeah. with grief to the point of death. Will you yeah. stay here and will you keep watch with me? That degree of pressure, mm -hmm. the weight that he felt in that moment. I want to encourage us, if we allow prayer to be an invitation into our process, I think we can allow, let's let pressure lead us to prayer. Yep. In, in Gethsemane, that's where Jesus is, the disciples are. And Gethsemane actually means olive press. And I remember being there when I was 19 mm -hmm. and seeing all of these very old olive trees. And they would use that to, to press, to, ma to make oil. And the same kind of oil that in Psalm 23, when yeah. it says, mm -hmm. you've anointed me with yeah. oil, my cup runneth over. It's a sign of God's presence. It's a sign of the Holy Spirit. And it's really, it's often in the midst of our pressing that we actually find his presence. Yeah. We don't like that part because it hurts. It's unfair. There's all kinds of things that it's come crushing. up. It's and whatever, heavy. And, and yeah. whatever is in us is getting <laughs> pressed true. out. Yeah. And, and I wish it was pure Holy Spirit oil, but a yeah. lot of times it's a lot of our own humanity and brokenness because it needs to come out in order for God to heal it. Totally. And so... When we think, when we, but we think when we face pressure that we're doing something wrong, that yeah. immediately like, oh, there's pressure or there's warfare. Maybe you felt that in the 21 days of prayer. And now it's like, oh, like uh, maybe I'm not in God's will. Not at all. Yeah. You might be right smack in, in the middle of God's will. And that's why we're experiencing what yeah. we are. See, pressure, pain, persecution, that's not always a sign that we're doing the wrong things. It actually might be a sign that we're doing the right things. Mm -hmm. Because when we think about that kind of pressure, I mean, even just to, to further illustrate, they would use these stones that could be up to about 1,000 pounds. 1,000 pounds. And so 900 pounds of pressure. 1,000 pounds <laughs> on of a pressure. Little, on like a little olive. On a bunch, like of, a olives, bunch of little olives. Smashing. And they would yeah. leave it there for 30 to 40 minutes. Guys, it only takes 25 pounds of pressure to break a bone in the human body. Thousand pounds of pressure left not for 10 minutes or 25 minutes, right. 30 to 40 minutes to press all that oil. Why? Well, if I could illustrate with our own lives, I, I think there are some things that only come out in minute 32. Yeah. <laughs> when the and, pressure and is not on minute like seven. and not minute 15. It's yeah. like, okay, this is uncomfortable. I don't yeah. like it. But God's like, I'm going to just let him sit right in there yeah. and let that pressure push out the junk yeah. it hasn't hit they have, oh we're at minute 37 yeah, i don't like this more minutes i don't like this 39 and a half this is unfair boom yeah. 40 and then all of a sudden whatever is in here then all of a sudden yeah. gets pressed out and whatever is in us fam gets pressed out yeah yeah i mean i what i appreciate about jesus's prayer mm -hmm. here when he talks about his, his soul is anguished mm -hmm. like Anguish is a, in, an intense word. Yeah. It's an intense way to describe how you feel. It, it's not like, oh, I stubbed my toe, hurt a bit. Yeah. It's like, I want to die. Mm -hmm. You're like, I can't handle anymore. I can't, I'm devastated. I'm desperate. I'm in despair. Mm -hmm. I'm, you know, and I'm like, I have felt that way. Yeah. You know, we have a, <sighs> we have a savior who understands. Yeah. He understands how we feel when we're confused and we're disoriented or yeah. we're, you know, or the pressure just feels so heavy that we just literally cannot yeah. anymore. And what he does is that he feels that weight and he literally goes to the ground. Yeah. You know, he, he puts his face to the ground and he cries out, yeah. you know, if take this cup from me, yeah. basically saying, 
if there's a different way to do this, God, yeah. like, <laughs> like yeah, I don't, I don't want to do this. I don't think I can do this. And he, he prays that three times. Yeah. And I just know, man, I, I have prayed that so many times. Yeah. God, I don't know how much longer I can do this. I don't know how to get through this. I don't know what tomorrow's going to bring. And in life sometimes just, it presses in on all sides. Yeah. And what we see with Jesus is that he presses through in prayer. You know, he, he, he yeah. expresses, God, if there's a better way or take this cut from me, yeah. but ultimately yeah. your will be done. And he models yeah. for us prayer in pressure. Yeah. And I just am so thankful and I take great comfort knowing I don't have to be perfect yeah. under pressure. Yeah, I, I, even as a man, when I look at the example of Christ, you know, some t I think sometimes we get uncomfortable with an emotional Jesus. You know, sometimes we get this thing, well, I, I, I you know, a gentle Jesus, meek and mild, and all this stuff. But I, I don't, like, and, and so we get, we get stoked when we see the pictures of Jesus flipping tables because it's like, ah. <laughs> and, and then for us, we're like, no, we're, we're men, right? We're men, and we, we shave with butter knives, and we do manly things, and we work out. A and butter we, knife? Yeah, that, anyway. But, you know. It's not a knife. This is a knife, right? <laughs> Nick, yeah, that was a pretty good Aussie accent. Don't worry about it. So, so like we have this picture of what it must be like, and then we, we bring that to faith. Yeah. And then we're like, definitely, if that's who I got to be, then I can't be weak. And so we're definitely not going to invite anybody in. Here's Jesus, the Messiah, the man. Definitely, not, he, is, he is about to become the slain lamb, but he is still the lion of the tribe of Judah. But the lion of the tribe of Judah mm -hmm. still let three men hear him cry. Yeah. Still let three men who had no idea what was going on experience and watch him get broken. Watch him get so stressed out that he sweat blood. Mm -hmm. Watch him let the pressure drive him into a posture of humility, not just puffed up, not tanted on, like face on the ground, yeah. God, I, I need you. That is a powerful expression of biblical manhood. Yep. That is a powerful expression of the kind of man that I want to be, one that is unafraid and unashamed to allow those closest to me to see me at my weakness, even mm -hmm. though it makes me so uncomfortable. I just told this to our staff the other day. I was wrestling through some things, and I said, I said, I hate this. I hate this feeling that makes me feel so insecure. Yeah. And I just, I'm so grateful for our incredible staff, for, for Calvin and Carl and Marsha and Jay and Ross, like, mm -hmm. like the pastoral staff that's like, no, no, you need this, though. Like you, we need this degree of safety so that we can move forward in a greater degree of health and freedom. Family, I'm going to tell you, your pastoral mm -hmm. staff is incredible. Yes. I'm just proud and honored to be a part of a team like that. And, and what we see next in this moment, Jesus's prayer life, we see yeah. him being pressed. And as he is being pressed, this is what happens, Mark 14, 36, and then he prays this prayer. We read it. Abba, Father, all things are possible for you. In fact, if you're watching this and, yeah. and you have the, I want you to read this out. Let this prayer be, if you're with your kids, repeat it out loud. Just pray out loud right now, ready and go. And he said, Abba, Father, all things are possible for you. Take this cup away from me. Nevertheless, not what I will but what you will. So what if prayer is an invitation into process, mm -hmm. if we want to encourage us, if, if, if watching Jesus' prayer life and, and reading his very words, that we want to allow the pressure to lead us to prayer, then, then here is also a truth, that strength will impress us, but struggle will connect us. Our strengths are always impressive. We throw around our strengths and it's, oh, wow, look what you can do, look what I can do, look what we all can do. And strengths are impressive. But struggle, that's what really connects us. 
And I want to point out something that I think is so powerful. It speaks to me mm-hmm. as, a, as a child of God. It speaks to me particularly as a father. Is that as Jesus is feeling pressed, as Jesus is struggling, yeah. as Jesus feels like this is, it's says, I want to die, guys. I am grieved. I am mm-hmm. sad. I troubled. feel alone. I'm troubled. I'm yeah. anguished, some of it says, yeah. to the point of death. When Jesus is struggling, the first person that Jesus goes to when he is struggling is his father. Yeah. Don't, don't, don't lose this. Like the first person that Jesus wants to go to, Mm -hmm. the first person that he needs to go to, the safest place in the place of his struggle Yep. And pain, Presence the first the person he wants to be around is his dad. That's how I want to parent. Yep. It's how I want to parent. I want my sons and my daughter to know definitively no matter what mistake they make, no matter what struggle they're having, no matter what anything, that the safest place that they can go is to dad and mom. I don't care. I don't care, son. I don't, I don't, whatever it is, you're in trouble, you call dad and mom. You're confused, you call dad and mom. You don't know what to do, you call dad and mom. That's how I want to parent, fam. I want to encourage us yeah. as moms and dads and grandmas and grandpas. Many of us didn't get this. Many of us, this, this example of Jesus and the heavenly father, we didn't experience that in our family. In fact, the thought of going to our parents for anything, yeah. particularly in a moment of struggle, embarrassment, or weakness, was like, are you kidding me? There's no way in heaven or hell that I would do that. Maybe that was your experience. Mm. Maybe we didn't grow up understanding or experiencing the kind of intimacy with our parents that allowed us in a moment of struggle to want to want to be there. Yeah. Because maybe we got shamed or or maybe there was abuse or something. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? It's not everybody's experience. But when I listen to Jesus' words. And how he is talking. This is the kind of dad I want to be, fam. This is the kind of parents that we yep. want to be. Yeah, it's the, the safety that we have in the presence of God. He'll never leave you nor forsake you. He'll, he won't humiliate you and he won't throw your struggle back in your face and he won't manipulate you and he won't, you know, be condescending towards you. He is faithful and he is just and he is righteous and he is holy but he's loving and compassionate and forgiving and merciful and he loves you with everything that he has you mm-hmm. and me and you and our kids and you know we're not perfect at it but that's what i want as yeah. well i want our kids to to come to us well, are we going to react perfectly all the time yeah yeah totally oh yeah oh definitely <laughs> That's pretty. Yeah. Yes. I didn't know where you were going to go. We got to bring it up just yeah. a little bit. Just, you know, yeah. 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 Okay. <laughs> no, we're not going to be perfect. No, not at all. And thank God for Jesus' example because yeah. we need to pray to be those kinds of parents and ask God, show yeah. me. Show me. And, yeah. and if, I, if I'm struggling to, to understand or struggling, I'm going to get on my face in prayer. That's right. And I'm going to reach out to my friend Charity and reach out to my friend Kimmy and Ayako and say, I'm struggling in motherhood. Yeah. Help me. What's, what is God saying to you? Mm-hmm. You know, I'm going to reach out and pray with a friend because we're not supposed to do this by ourselves. Yeah, and that's where we connect. Yeah. Uh, not, we don't all have the same strengths. It's amazing when we're too busy throwing around our strengths mm-hmm. and, and puffing our own chests about what we can do and, and, and using our strengths to hide what's going on, we actually aren't connecting the way yeah. that we actually really desperately want to. It's when we actually connect in the place of struggle. Yeah. It's where that, in that moment, that's when we're like, 
oh, so you too. Mm-hmm. Okay. Mm-hmm. I mean, I guess that's good to know. <laughs> now, now we can have a little bit more of an honest conversation. You know, some people are scared of these moments. And there, there is. There's, there's yeah. probably justifiable yeah. reasons. And, and, and we don't have a lot of examples in American culture of this being a healthy expression of emotion. And so we get scared that if we get too emotional, somehow that's not Jesus or, yeah. or something. And, and here we are looking at this language. I don't see Jesus compromising his character in any way by recognizing yeah. the depth of his emotion, his humanity, and the relationship that he has with his father. Mm-hmm. I mean, look at his language. He said he prays. He says, Abba. It, it's, it's a very relational term. Yeah. You know, that's not even Jehovah. It's not even uh, uh, God. It, it, it's like Abba. It's like dad. Dad. And, and, and in this moment, we actually see, what do we see? We see examples, yep. you know, in the beginning of Matthew, when the disciples said, hey, would you teach us how to pray? Mm-hmm. And Jesus teaches them how to pray. What's one of the first things that he says? The Lord's Prayer. I mean, Lord's prayer. how does that start? Our Father who art in heaven. You passed the test. Yeah. <laughs> oh, man. That was good. Oh, dude, you're so good. That would have been embarrassing. Yeah, I had, um, <laughs> oh, hey, Sunday school, Sunday school. Hey, buddy? Yeah. yeah that, no, he didn't start that way. Hey, friend. Abba. He says, yeah. Abba. Abba, Father. <laughs> yeah. All things are possible. Lord, our Father who art in heaven. We see that Jesus... Yep. He didn't just teach it. He modeled it. He was about that business. Yep. Next thing he says is, Jesus, Jesus is praying, God, Father, all things are possible for you. But would you take this cup away? What does that sound like? That sounds like, help. Help. Yeah. Save me. Help Jesus, me. That's, that's one of the best prayers. Yeah. Help. Jesus, help. I don't know all the words. Good. Better you don't. Yeah. Help, Jesus. Help. Send me someone who can help. Yeah. Who well, can I talk to? Well, I mean, he's Jesus, right? So he could have just been like, yeah, all right, look, I got, I'm, I got this. I'm, you know, I'm Who's human. Got two and I'm got, and yeah. the Messiah, son of God. <laughs> I'm out of here, you know? Yeah. Like, that's what I, that's what I would have done. <laughs> <laughs> no, but then. He doesn't do that. And in that moment, I think, like, when he's asking, take the cup away, Father, would you take. I, I bet in his humanity, there was a moment of temptation. Sure. A moment to be able, should I lean into this? How can I get out of this? Who would it? And what does that sound like in the Lord's Prayer? Lead me not into temptation. You won that. You oh got, my you're getting gosh. gold stars and gold high stars. fives all hey. over the place. It was, it's also right here. But Lord, you know, yeah. <laughs> Lord's Prayer, lead me not into temptation. Yeah. God, I know that you're not actually going to lead me to sin, but help me to not wander my silly self into a place where I'm going to compromise my character. Yep. It's the model right here. And then he says, not what I want, but what you will. Ultimately, he has hope in God's purpose for this moment. Yep. It's not just that, that he, I mean, he knows it's your will. And God, everything that occurs that God allows, like he allow, for the good of those who love him. And it sounds like in the Lord's Prayer, your will be done. Mm-hmm. When Jesus was pressed, what came out was his love for his dad and his desire to want to obey him and trust him. Yeah. What is in us will get pressed and squeezed out mm-hmm. in the struggle and in the pressure of life. And what, what we don't want to do is, is necessarily be so, take, like, so surprised that what is squeezed out is a lot of flesh and humanity yeah. and brokenness. Sure. Because then what we can do is as we're emptied, we can fill ourselves with yeah. God's presence. So now what? So what? If you were to say, Pat, that's really nice. So what? <laughs> and I'd be like, whoa. Calm down. <laughs> hey. Okay, I'm gonna get to that. I'd be, I'd say this is is here's what I want to. If there's one thing that you could do just practically this yeah. week, a simple point of application is I want you to pray with someone this week. Invite someone in to your process. Invite someone in. Yeah. Allow someone 
to see the pressure that you might be facing, allow yeah. someone to see the struggle you might be dealing with in order to actually connect. We were not designed to do these things yep. alone. So I would, I want to encourage you, pray with someone. Mm -hmm. Hey, maybe you're going to pop on the Zoom Tuesday, Wednesday, or Thursday a.m., yeah. 6 a.m. here in the office or on Zoom with me yeah. bright and early. And maybe you're going to pray with us, pray with someone. Maybe it's going to be someone in your life group. Mm -hmm. Maybe you've never done this before and that the thought of that terrifies you. And I would encourage you, pray to God yeah. and, and ask him to help give you enough peace. But also, God, who like who can I trust to mm. want to pray? Maybe you've never done that before. Pray I, with your spouse. Pray with your spouse. Come on, we need this. Sometimes that's <laughs> weird. Sometimes it's a little awkward. You think yeah. when we get into some beef, some we're fighting, and it's like, and then it's like, well, we should pray. And it's like, yeah, we should pray. Well, then you start. It usually goes like that. It usually goes. I'm like, well, we should pray, babe. And I'm like, well, okay, well, go ahead. No, you start. No, you. I mean, you brought it up, so you initiated, so you start to pray. But you're like the head of the home. Well, I mean, yeah, but you you hear God different and more intimately. So just pray. We just pray. But you're like a pastor. Ah! <laughs> That's how it goes, a lot of times. <laughs> or if we're, <laughs> or if we're really beefing, it's just like yeah. we just sit there and we're yep. like. <sighs> I'm telling you, we have sat in awkward <laughs> silence. No music, no, no Hillsong no, yeah, music yeah, nothing to, to help set ease the that tone. tension. Nope. We just sat in the awkward. moment, let the silence <laughs> squeeze the awkward <laughs> right out <laughs> until someone finally was like, help. Fine. Jesus, help us. <laughs> Jesus. I, I think we actually prayed. <laughs> Jesus, you know we don't want to be here. <laughs> yes, yeah, so we've done that. <laughs> but we're here. But we're here, God. Yeah. So what now? Yeah. And then it went from there. Mm -hmm. So I know, super holy, and yeah. you should be really impressed with all of that. But look, bottom line is, is whatever we need to do to increase conversation with Jesus yes. and to invite people into some of that, particularly our spouses, our, yeah. our friends, our brothers, our sisters, that mm -hmm. are only going to sharpen us to more reflect God's glory, yeah. all the better, fam. So let's pray with someone. Yeah. You know, as we talk about the, the, the struggle, what it looks like to pray when the struggle is on, I know many of us have experienced quite a struggle yeah. in, this, in this last year, in the last two years. Um, you know, we're in it, fam. And, and yeah. we're no exception. You're no exception to those things. Yeah. I mean, I know for... For us, for myself personally, I feel like I've just been in this pressing and I, I want to share with you family a little bit of what the past 24 months have looked like so that you can see that you're, you're not alone. And, you know, if, if strengths can impress us and struggle surely can connect us. And, you know, it was August of 2019 and my, my godmother passed away. She got real, real sick. And it was, it happened so fast. And she was the one, she gave me my first Bible when I was seven. And my whole family, you know, they're like, okay, you gotta come, Tara, and you gotta do the funeral. I've never officiated a funeral before. And it was so hard. And, and the pressing there was, you know, there was this, the, the pressing was the, the loss of this family member. And it was like, gosh, I'm, I'm so sad. You know, what came out, it was like, I'm so sad, God, I'm so sad. And then, a couple of weeks later, kids start school. J our oldest son, Jaden, starts experiencing some bullying and it, it gets worse and worse as time goes on. Eli starts a preschool. It's not a good fit and he has a real hard time adjusting. Two months later, my sister gets diagnosed with breast cancer. God, this is hard. There's so much. I'm still grieving the loss of my, my godmother. Jaden's still having a hard time. The school doesn't know what to do. Eli is having the worst time ever. And I feel like a failure as a mother and this squeezing, like I'm failing as a mom. I'm sad about my godmother and I don't know what to do. Ministry is amazing, but tough at the same time. I'm trying to sell my home-based business and then October hits and then my sister calls me and she gets diagnosed with breast cancer. This is all within four months yeah. in 2019. And it's just this pressing and pressing and pressing. And then December comes. We had some personal things going on in our marriage that we were trying to sort out. And then some other things happen on top, on top, on top. And it's just this like 
pressure, yeah. pressure. And by pressure, I mean just heaviness. Yeah. Just this, like you feel pressed in on all sides. And January 2020, it's 2020. We got the 2020 vision. It's a new year. This is it. <laughs> it was not. <laughs> it, was, it was not it. It was not it. <laughs> You know, my, my sister's right in the middle of all yeah. of her, her treatments yeah. and Jaden is, we, we decide he, he needs counseling. We need counseling. And so we saw some help. Yeah. And then of course COVID hit and Eli just got into a brand new preschool and then COVID hit and oh my gosh, now he's behind. I sold my home-based business and there was other things with that. So God, we're depending on that income. Now we don't have it. And you know, as, as much as we did and it's like, I don't know what to do. I don't know what to do. And my brain, my mind, my heart was so heavy. My soul felt that anguish. And when we had that, that meeting with our counselor mm -hmm. and finally just gave clarity to what I was feeling because I just, I, I was not myself. Yeah. I was so angry. Yeah, what was, what was being pressed out of us uh, wasn't necessarily the oil of gladness. No, it wasn't like, thank you, God, this is great. <laughs> it was a lot of yeah. frustration. It was a lot of anger. It was a lot of why why me? It was, it was a lot, a lot of hurt. Of, it was a lot of confusion. Yeah. And, and it, for me, it looked like, I just don't want to do this anymore. Mm -hmm. I don't know what more to do. God, I, don't, I can't control so much of what's happening. And I'm so sad inside. And it comes out. In, in, in ways that I don't like about myself. Mm -hmm. And when our counselor was like, well, Tara, have you thought about, you know, wh what depression looks like? And, and we talked all through that. And then there was this lifting because there was an answer. And there was, you know, then I had my husband who would love me through this, the same way that you came to me our first year of marriage and said, I'm struggling, babe. I came to you and said, I'm struggling. I'm not, I don't want to deal with this like this anymore. And I need help. And our community rallied so hard around us. And then we had our small group one night and we shared with them. It was such a vulnerable night and they just laid hands on us and prayed for us. And then COVID hit and we all know, <laughs> we all know. We all know. And, and so the, the, the pressing and the squeezing of all of this of what, yeah. you know, I knew Jesus is in there. I had worshiped I, like fighting night, like tooth and nail. Yeah. I just want you, Jesus, I want what to come, I want what comes out of me to glorify you, God. But so much of my prayers were help me. Yeah. If there's a better way to do this, God, help me. But ultimately your will be done. And so it was a lot of fall on your face moments. It was a lot of, would you pray with me? Would you stay with me? Would you be here with me and love me in this and the fruit, if I can just tell you, family, the other side of this, what has come out now in that squeezing and that pressing, my sister is cancer free. Yeah. Jaden is back in school and confident as ever. Our friends, our, our, our pastors have rallied around us and have loved us through so much. And we are in such a place now in our marriage where it's, stronger than ever. It's not perfect at all, but we are, I just, I love you so much and thank you for loving me in what has been probably the darkest part so far in my life. And I just want all of you family to know you've got Holy Spirit in you. Yeah. You've got the love of God in you. You have the peace of God in you. And so when you're pressed in on all sides, you may be crushed and persecuted, but you're not abandoned. Yeah. The enemy might be coming at you left and right the way that he does with all of us, but it is not true the lies that he tells you that you're a failure or you're behind yeah. or you're not gonna make it or you know, that God has left you, that's not true. Yeah. And there's a community and there's leaders and there's pastors and there's incredible people in our church who love to pray with you and walk with you and resource you with everything you could possibly need for you to come out onto this other side. And that, so what comes out of you now is that worship and that love and that healing, because that's what God promises. Jesus acknowledged all of the emotion, but he didn't stay there. And he obeyed the Lord because he loves, he loves the Lord, he loved God. 
even though he knew what was coming. But in the end, there's victory. He didn't stay dead either. And so we have that same resurrection power in us that we are not destined for death and to stay there. The resurrection power is within you and me to overcome any crushing that we may be facing, but you're not supposed to do it alone. And we're not supposed to do this by ourselves. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. It's true. I just love you so much. <laughs> I love you. I love you too. Yeah. I'm, I'm looking at Psalm 91 and, and it says this, he who dwells in the shelter of the most high will abide in the shadow of the almighty. And I hope these words are encouraging to you. I will say to the Lord, my refuge my fortress, my God in whom I trust, for he will deliver you from the snare of the fowler and from the deadly pestilence. He will cover you with his pinions and under his wings you'll find refuge. His faithfulness is a shield and a buckler. You will not fear the terror of the night, nor the arrow that flies by the day, nor the pestilence that stalks in the darkness nor the destruction that wastes at noonday. A thousand might fall at your side. 10,000 might fall at your right hand, but it won't come near you. You only look with your eyes and see the recompense of the wicked because you have made the Lord your dwelling place, the most high who is my refuge. No evil will be allowed to befall. No plague to come near your tent. He'll command his angels concerning you, guard you in all your ways. On their hands, they'll bear you up, lest you strike your foot against the stone. You'll tread on the lion and the adder. The young lion, the serpent, you will trample underfoot because he holds fast to me in love. I will deliver him because he holds fast to me in love. I'll protect him because he knows my name and when he calls to me, I'll answer. I'll be with him in trouble. I'll rescue him and honor him. And with a long life, I'll satisfy him and show him my salvation. Yeah. Man, I hope you're encouraged. I hope you're encouraged by the prayer life of Jesus. And I hope you're encouraged as we go into this last week of prayer and we're going to celebrate um, uh, this coming uh, Friday night. That, that we celebrate already in the place of victory. We're not earning it. Mm-hmm. We're not trying to convince God to like us more or to reward us because of our great discipline. We've already won the banner. Jehovah Nisi is flown. Mm-hmm. And we get to just celebrate the gift that we have of friendship with Christ and intimacy with a God who loves us, who is our refuge and our shield. And so I just want to pray with for you uh, as we close. Yeah. Uh, Father, I pray that, that we grow in prayer. Father, I pray a, a revival of prayer sweeps through our community. It's mm-hmm. almost like we couldn't imagine going 10 minutes without talking to you. Many of us remember that feeling, first dating maybe our spouses or our first love, where we couldn't imagine not seeing that person uh, during the day. God, we can't do what you ask us to do without without prayer and without your presence. So help us to pray honestly like Jesus. And maybe I know, maybe you've gotten to this point, which if you have, Praise Jesus. <laughs> but maybe you've never invited Jesus into your life. Maybe you've never, you can never say that you've had a, a relationship with God like what you are hearing about now. And I want to invite you to pray this prayer out loud with me. Abba Father, I want to connect with you relationally. I know that salvation isn't going to church, but when I connect with you, Jesus, you destroy the barrier between me and you. God, I know I seem far from you, but salvation is when you come close. And I know it can only happen through Jesus. And so I want to invite you in. Thank you for dying on the cross for my sin. I want to receive you into my life. Forgive me of when I've gone my own way. 
Come live inside me. Forgive me of my sin. Change my heart and have your way in me, God. I give you my life. Thank you for setting me free. Look, if you prayed that prayer and, and for the first time, we want you to connect. Like, click on that button that yeah. comes up in the chat. It says, I'm committing my life to Jesus. And we'd love to follow up with you. Um, uh, maybe you're watching this on another platform. Text the word faith to 808-670-3377. And we would love to walk with you. One of our uh, team would love to pray with you, walk with you, connect with you as you walk these next step, steps of faith. Family, we love you so much. Let's press into yeah. this last week of prayer and uh, we'll see you at our service coming up. God bless you. We love you and we'll see you soon.